All right, welcome back to the channel. We are doing another one wheel video today because they are super fun to make and it is super fun to ride. Uh, uh, I got the one wheel pint going through the neighborhood on a little errand today. The point of this video is gonna be talking about the Kush Nug High, which is a replacement for the tailplate on the one wheel pint. Um, why did I buy this thing? Uh, I really kind of am enjoying the customization that you can do on these and how easy it is to kind of change stuff around and move things around. So I felt like giving it a go. So the Kushnug High is brought to you by The Float Life. Comes in this awesome little packaging. Had my little buddy helping uh, take it out. He was kind of stumped by this bubble wrap. So that was a bit of a process to get out. But uh, long story short, it shows up. There's a sticker. There's some bubble wrap. There's the actual thingamajig. And you could see immediately that the material is very, very different. This is the first time I took the tailplate off and was kind of blown away by just how hard and flat it was compared to the Kushnug High, which Kushnug High is referring to, other than some weed reference, is referring to the fact that it has a uh, very high uh, lip on it, I guess you could say. And it has, um, I guess the term would be camber on it, um, or a concave. Uh, so on the left and right side and on the back, it angles up and on the back, it angles up quite a bit compared to the regular uh, tailplate. Uh, also, the material is radically different. Uh, I kind of didn't realize the material on the, the base insert on the tailpiece is just hard plastic with grip tape on it. And especially when you kind of go for longer rides and stuff. Yeah, you know, I absolutely do notice some foot fatigue and uh, when you're hitting a ton of bumps and stuff like that, you can definitely notice that the, the feet start getting a little extra tired. Um, but so with the Kushnuk High, it has a ton of like, it's almost like a tire rubber feel to it. Um, when it's on the board itself, it doesn't feel squishy or anything like that. But there is a noticeable change in foot feel. For me, when I first put it on, I noticed that it, it's wild. I, I noticed I felt like I could feel it kind of digging into my heel and my toe a little bit. And the middle of my foot was kind of uh, had a, almost less contact. Um, and it's funny now riding it for a couple weeks that I don't notice that at all anymore. And I think it's because my foot's really adapted to being able to grip into that concave that it has that much better and be able to get a lot more control. Um, in this moment in my uh, foot setup, uh, in my video setup here, um, you kind of can't see it too much because I really am almost perpendicular across the uh, foot pad. Uh, but generally, I've been uh, angling my back foot a lot more with my nose pointing more towards the wheel and my heel more towards the tail. Obviously, I'm not actually doing that in this moment, uh, but I noticed that foot position does feel really good with this tail plate on uh, because the foot really is able to then sit right into that groove of the concave and uh, you do get a lot more grip. Um, when I was kind of looking around and shopping around on these different tail plates and stuff, uh, a lot of people were talking about that this is going to help you carve and going to be able to help you get a lot more grip. Um, to me, I feel like that's a lot of kind of marketing hype or just people wanting it to do things that it's not going to do. Um, I don't find any inability to carve on a one wheel. Like, I don't think the foot pad makes any difference. Carving on a one wheel is, to me at least, very, very simple. Um, and you don't need more grip to be able to do it right. If anything, if you, like, I come from a snowboarding background, like I've said before, um, it, you have to do everything extraordinarily, uh, delicately and finely when you're doing it on the one wheel compared to a snowboard or a surfboard. If you start hammering into those edges with your heels and toes, you are just going to go flying off of it. So giving you a tailplate that has more grip doesn't actually, you don't actually need more grip to be able to carve. Um, you just need better control and to really that kind of fine movement pattern control and that, that weight shifting. Um, that is not to say that there's anything wrong with this product. 
it goes but if you're struggling to develop the kind of the feel and the flow of carving uh, a tailplate's not going to do that for you. It, if anything, if I was to give you a, the 10 second lesson is focus on in your carves, letting your hips and upper body do the work and don't try to just be rocking onto your heels and toes to do stuff. Um, wherever your hips and shoulders go, the board's going to follow. And so the more you just let your knees bend and just wait and de-weight from turn to turn, uh, the better. Um, Okay, we're kind of catch up in our ride here. I had a quick little errand over to CVS, so I thought, what well, better than to just, uh, you know, one wheel it. We're kind of hightailing it across the highway right now and trying not to get smacked by a car. Uh, of course, wear your helmet. Um, and we're actually already kind of cruising into the CVS lot right now. We're in, like, full pandemic mode still, so I look ridiculous. I have a face mask on. I got a helmet on. I got a floating one wheel board that no one knows what it is. So I've got a serious look going on right now. It's kind of like something out of Mad Max. Um, but sweet little skid stop because that's my fave. And uh, yeah, so we cut off. We're not going to watch Inside CBS, but there's just a nice little profile of the Kushnug High. You can really see how much of a lip it has. And also it makes the tail bigger because it, it goes from the base of the board and expands outward. So you get like an extra inch or two of uh of tail and it's funny because you will notice that that you even though it's only like an extra inch you will notice a lot more room for your foot and a lot more places for it to go um you can see now because i kind of am doing some terrible camera work but i'm really on my back foot you can actually see how my heel is more towards the corner of the plate and my toe is actually angled a bit like it's not too extreme there but that's kind of to me a really nice sweet spot to be able to push into that back of the heel side and then push down into that toe side and get a lot of control. Um, and again, if anything, you don't want to be using too much heel and toe because you will very quickly oversteer the board and overturn it. Um, I don't know if you've really been able to notice, but this is a very hilly neighborhood that I live in. Um, and one of the things I've really had to dial in is understanding do not go fast like the one wheel is not a fast machine and the more you ride the more comfortable you get at speed and the more and more you're constantly battling against that pushback so the biggest thing I try and do is first of all be cognizant of the pushback when it comes in don't try to just ride it in that Captain Morgan stance which I've been guilty of doing in the past once you feel that pushback come in chill out slow down a little bit, throw a couple carves in, and make sure that board flattens out. With the pint, I think you can get, because that pushback comes in at 14 miles per hour, I think, and I know, you can get it up to about 18, 19 miles per hour before it will nosedive, but it's very easy to get too comfortable in that nose-up position and then uh, get yourself into some trouble. So realize it's not a speed machine. It's for fun and it's for cruising. And the difference between cruising around at 12 to 14 miles per hour and then pushing it between 14 and 16 is the difference between a good time and a bad time. So uh, the more and more you don't try to push through that, the better. And again, this is a super hilly neighborhood. So it's very easy to be bombing down these hills and pick up way too much speed. And you are going to get flung off the end of this thing in a not so pretty way if you're not careful. Uh, but better, you know, using these downhills to also recharge the battery is pretty sweet. It's wild how much power will get pushed back into the battery when you go downhill. Um, so definitely utilize that. Um, and then one of the big things that I've noticed is the more you kind of make the uh, make the journey the uh, make the journey the fun part as opposed to just the destination. Uh, the more fun you'll have in a one wheel. So like where I'm coming up on right now is a long, long downhill, uh, which usually means like you could do some nice big carves down that. Um, but for the most part, you're just kind of speed checking because it's too steep. Uh, whereas I've found that it's a lot of fun to be able to kind of hop up on the sidewalk and really just try to do kind of, you know, uh, the narrow sidewalk run the whole way down even though it, because it's super steep, like, you know, it's tough to always change tough from camera angle, but this is all steeply downhill. 
but now carving on a sidewalk and bouncing around. Obviously, the sidewalk's uneven. Um, there's pop spots where it's popping up everywhere, and I'm just kind of carving back and forth, heel edge, toe edge, um, and for the most part, doing that through my hips the whole way, and then just keeping some really loose knees so that when I see like some super uneven sidewalk, I can just kind of get more onto that back foot, let the wheel hit the bump, and then catch the board again, and then I don't fall down. Um, but also, as much as this feels like uh, I'm moving quickly, at no point am I getting pushback because I'm just not going as fast as I could over smooth, open road. Um, and this is the fun stuff, right? Like being able to turn a sidewalk into like a quick little powder run through like trees, it's awesome. Um, and this is a place where the that tailplate really does shine because you are getting more grip and your foot has more places to be. So not that it's gonna necessarily make me carve better, but my foot is gonna be that much more locked on and it has uh, an updated grip tape on it, which definitely keeps my foot in place better, but it's also easier to adjust my foot on. Um, or also I'm just getting a little smoother with being comfortable moving my weight around and moving my feet around. Um, but yeah, Cushion Hug High uh, is definitely, uh, I don't think I could ever put like an, the old classic tailplate on again just because it really does, you really get so much more comfortable on it um, and you don't have any back foot fatigue even if you do an entire run on one battery, on roads, at full speed. Um, you know, I've always actually gotten a little more front foot fatigue than anything um, and this won't help with that too much, uh, but the back foot is now no longer an issue or a problem anymore um, and we're just cruising and enjoying it. Uh, one other quick note, I got at the same time the, uh, the one wheel stand from the, who did I get it from? Uh, I think I ordered that from the Float Life as well, their metal stand, uh, for the Kushnug. Uh, they, they make a special one for the Kushnug High because it makes that back tail so much thicker. Um, and it's awesome. It's like, I don't know, it was like 50 bucks or something. It's metal. It fits the board perfectly. Um, you just drop the board and it stands up and yeah, you could finally kind of get the board out of the way a little bit. Uh, my only, uh, gripe with the stand itself is that it would be nice if it had some, uh, some sides to it. So in case someone like clunked into the board, it wouldn't just fall over. I don't know how mechanically or engineeringly wise that's possible, but, uh, that's the only really thing I noticed, but it's doing the job perfect. Um, yeah, so we're wrapping it up. Kushnug High, definitely recommend. Check it out. I got it from the Float Life. They were cool. Uh, you should check it out too. Um, yeah, that's pretty much going to wrap it up for this ride. Coming back into the garage. You know, you know there's going to be a skid stop coming. And that's a wrap. See ya.